Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells back with another super size eBay sales video. These are items that sold for $100 or more during the month of July 2018. And this comes from my Facebook group where we do this thread once a month and people post what they found, where they got it, how much they paid, what it sold for and show us the actual item either linking to it or a screenshot of it um, and this is your motivation this this is proof that eBay is not dead that you can make good money that it's not all about how much you're listing and how fast you're listing it and how fast you're turning it over this is quality not quantity and this is also to show you this is absolutely going on people like you are doing this every day and you can do it too but you got to get those items listed now before we get started I wanted to address some comments and emails I've been getting about the um, amount of content I'm putting on YouTube these days and yes I have scaled back because my efforts are going to my premium content library and this is where all the juicy good stuff is going so if you have not checked that out yet you absolutely should let me give you a quick little tour about what has been added lately um, there's now over 18 hours of video 57 videos are in this premium content library and you can think of this as um, sort of a hybrid between Netflix and PBS for eBay sellers. This is all the great stuff you need to know to make more money on eBay. Um, some things I've added, for example, in the consumables course, I have added an entire course about discontinued items, telling you how to figure out what they are, what categories they're in, how to find them, how much they can sell for, and as well as a list of discontinued items to sell meaning things like health and beauty products, groceries, pet items, consumable items that are at retail stores, Walmart, Target, grocery stores, drug stores that you might come across that sell for ridiculously high prices because they've been discontinued. So that right there is going to help you make money because you can be on the lookout for those items. We've also got a great new section called ephemera which is paper stuff basically and I'm adding videos to that section um, I've got one coming up on sheet music that's going to be really interesting so that's going to help you make money um, another section is the materials section I constantly add letters and documents to this section to help you reply to buyers your family friends any kind of frequently asked questions where you would like a really good professional response and trust me as eBay sellers we get the same questions from people over and over again so this is going to help you respond professionally and um, intelligently to not only buyers but other people who might um, criticize your business, criticize what you're doing, um, talk down to you because you're an eBay seller and you know what we don't have to take that so th this comes from my uh, banking background where we had a policies and procedures manual where everything was scripted we knew what to say when we were in a tight situation um, also from my writing background and my business degree so I've got you covered if you need a good response to any kind of situation. Um, we've also got a great what to sell section and some of the formats here are niche items of the month where I give you lists of what's hot, what's trending, things that you probably have not heard of that are out there that you can resell and then also a what is this and how much is it worth section which I give you uh, common items that you might see in thrift stores or at garage sales and not know what they are so that you can recognize them going forward and know to pick them up and resell them. 
Another section that people really like is the buying for resale section. And in here I've got a great series called Time Wasters. And these are things you don't want to sell. So there's an hour and a half right there of video explaining things to leave behind that don't really sell well on eBay. And giving you the proof as far as completed listings showing you not to bother. Um, we've got a SEO section to help you write better listings, get, get to the top of search, and um, conquering your eBay fears where I go over common eBay fears, things that might be causing you to get in your own way if you're not being aggressive enough with your business, you're not doing all the things you can to get the sales and be the better seller because eBay is all about competition so you cannot let fear get in your way you've got to you know hit the ground running be aggressive do things other sellers aren't doing and you know if, if you're starting sentences about selling on eBay with I'm scared to I'm afraid to um, I don't know what will happen if um, we're going to tackle that because you should not let fear get in your way. So um, there's just so much material in here. You really need to come check this out. Um, and one more section I'm doing, and this is not just for the baby boomers. This is for everybody. Technology tips. Things that you may not know how to do because you don't really know how to use your mobile phone. You don't really know how to use eBay or the internet. and these are going to save you time and they're going to empower you when you're outsourcing because you have a very valuable and smart tool in your hand your smartphone and if you don't know all the things it can do and how it can help you be a better seller and do things faster um, you're you're missing out because eBay is all about how much you can get done how quickly and efficiently you can do it so I've got to link the link to this below the video check it out it's absolutely worth your time to get in there and see what's going on because you are missing out. I can't put everything on YouTube. I've got to earn a living too. So I'm doing my best to balance all of these things. So we are going to get into the video about $100 sales now. Okay, so this is going back to July of 2008. Sorry, 2018, not 2008. And again, these are items that sold for over $100. And I do these videos because anybody can find this stuff. It's out there. People are finding it. And if you know what to look for, and you, if you make mental notes of these things, or even pause the video and do screenshots, or figure out a way to save this information and study this information, you're going to be a smarter seller, you're going to be a smarter sourcer, and you're going to know what to look for. So we're going to start with Jamie, who bought these at Savers the day after Christmas for their 90% off Christmas sale. Paid a total of $4.54, took seven months to sell. Sold for $129.95 plus shipping. Okay, so let's see what it is. It's a Christmas nativity figurine set. And we're going to go to the original listing. Here it is. Christmas Nativity Figurines, Star Over Holy Land, Bethlehem, Accessories and Buildings. So let's take a closer look at what the boxes look like. Okay, so it says Star Over Holy, let's see, Star Over Holy Land, Bethlehem Buildings. Okay. And she sold the whole set for $129.95 and she paid $4.54 for that. And I'm going to say this again because maybe you're new and you haven't heard this. eBay knows no seasons. If you have it, list it. Um, I got an email the other day from somebody that said um, they lived in Minnesota and they were hesitant to sell summer clothing in the fall. And, okay, it doesn't matter where you live. People who ha who are going to use what you're selling don't live where you live. They live other places. So you have to get out of your own head and think about who's going to buy your item. And it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. 
people will buy anything all year long. Somebody bought this nativity set in July and paid over $100 for it. So that is proof right there that if you don't have your items listed, they can't sell and anything sells anytime. Okay, on to Jerry. Found this tripod at a yard sale, picked it up for $5. Bogan, B-O-G-E-N, is a BOLO, that stands for Be On The Lookout, name on tripods. I sold this in less than two weeks for $129.99. Okay, let's take a look at it. Here we go. Bogan, professional tripod. Okay, he's got all the, the keywords on there. So let's see if he's got... Here is the brand name in the logo. It's got these big fat, um, softly curved type letters in the font. Bogan Tripod. Okay, you don't have to know anything about photography to know how to sell a tripod. It's just a thing you stick a camera on. And again, he paid $5 and it sold for $129.99. And then we've got Jerry again. This was another $5 yard sale find. It sold in 24 hours for full price of $199 plus shipping. $5, he turned it into $100, basically $200. And it is a DVR, VCR, DVD recorder with remote manual cables and some tapes. So he made a nice bundle of this for whoever might want it. Um, not everybody's watching Netflix. Not everybody has cable. Not everybody, you know, is doing everything digitally. Plenty of people still like to watch their movies, their DVDs, their VHS tapes on this type of um, device. So you may not, but it doesn't mean your buyer won't. So that's proof right there. $5 turned it into $200. Okay, then we've got Emily. And she sold this Betsy Johnson dress. She paid $6.99 for it. And it sold for $189.99. Okay, and this is very steampunk looking. If you don't know what steampunk is, check out my video on that. It's a style of clothing and cosplay. And um, it's, it's kind of like industrial meets the late 1800s kind of look. Um, so here it is, a nice sort of jacket dress with the puffy sleeves, the lamb chop sleeves, sorry, leg of mutton sleeves. And does she have the label? There we go. Now this label right here is special. Um, there's a name for this label. Let me see if she has this on her listing. Um, I saw this on something I was researching the other day so if you know the name of it put it under the video but it's something it's a vintage label that has this um, like person's face the silhouette on it so that's important there as well as the style of the item so now you've seen that and she bought it for $6.99 and it she raised the price from $149 to $189, and it sold. So there you go. All right, Casey, who is our Recycling Center Park City, Utah guy, sold these for $250. He paid $10 at a thrift store, and they are NYX, N-I-C-K-S, handcrafted leather hot shot, basically boots. $250 for these boots. Um, let's go take a look at the actual listing here. So if there's a logo we can look at. Let's see. It's got the nice Vibram soles there with lots of um, lots of wear left on those soles. There it is. NYX. You can barely see it. It's, it's uh, like branded into the leather. But the brand is called NYX, N-I-C-K-S. And he picked those up for $10 and they sold for $250. So that's definitely a supersized sale. 
Then we've got Casey again with his $5 recycling center find, sold for $149.95 with free shipping in 24 hours. Let's see what this is. It is a stereo tuner pre-amplifier with a bunch of numbers and stuff on the title. <laughs> But the moral of the story here is he picked up something for five bucks and sold it for 150. And let's see, it was part. It was a three-part system that turned fifteen dollars to four hundred and twenty-nine dollars. He parted it out, and it has to do with he never heard with the brand, but it was made in Japan and that is that's um, a clue that something is going to be worth some money not made in China made in Japan is going to be higher quality then we've got KC again two dollars at thrift store hundred twenty nine dollars plus shipping sold in one hour it looks like something from TJ Maxx to me but the barely visible name on the handle inspired a whim price to check on eBay so let's see what this is. Jan, how we say this? Barbagoli, Barbaglio, I'm sure I butchered that. Hammered metal casserole dish with handles. So that is what hammered metal looks like. Casserole dish. And there's the, the name there on the side of it, um, made into the metal. So he took the time to look that up and it sold for $129. He paid $2. See how much you can learn from this thread? Just all kinds of things you can sell if you take the time to look them up. Colleen, found at a yard sale for $10. It was new factory sealed. Took a best offer of $175 plus shipping. Sold in about two weeks. This is a Kodak wireless all-in-one printer. And here it is, new in box, factory sealed. So new in box item. She paid $10, took best offer of $175. Sold in about two weeks. Okay, Leslie found the scrubbing bubbles kit at a thrift store for $6. Sold for $125 in about an hour. Somebody probably had an alert set up on this. And here it is. Somebody really does not want to clean their shower. Um, they want this little gadget to do it. So it's the SC Johnson Scrubbing Bubbles Automatic Shower Cleaner Kit. Take a look at the box, what it looks like. Uh, the refills on this sell really well. Also, um, so when you see the scrubbing bubbles thing in the bright green box, grab it, look it up, see if this is it. Six dollars, she turned it into $125 in an hour. So again, get your items listed. They can't sell if you don't have them listed. You could have money coming in in a matter of minutes if you get the stuff listed. Wendy bought, found this bag of Oneida flatware at Goodwill for $9.99. After cleaning up the flatware, realized some of the prices were, oh sorry, some of the pieces were damaged. Decided I would list as a lot in an auction. Very pleased to sell for $258.35. And this is again, she paid $9.99, sold it for $250. She took the time to polish it. This is when you put on a great movie or some of my videos on a playlist and just listen to something interesting and get your work done get your stuff cleaned so you can list it um, you know I really don't mind cleaning stuff and ironing and preparing my items I find that to be kind of relaxing and you're not just sitting at the computer getting tech neck um, straining you know sitting hurting your back um, you're up around doing things being busy with your business so that's just part of it. This isn't all just shopping and sitting at the computer. There's other things to do. But um, let's see what she started her auction at. Started at $89.99, ended up selling for $258. dollars 
So you really got to do the research to determine if you should do an auction or fixed price. I see this question all the time. You have to do the research on the item. If you ask 20 different sellers how to do something, you're going to get 20 different answers. So a lot of this is just you've got to figure it out. You've got to do trial and error. Nobody can tell you everything about how to do this business. You've got to throw yourself out there and just try different ways of doing it. And you can't be afraid of making a mistake because um, that's how you learn. And that's just life. You're going to make mistakes. So whatever this item is, there's a million more like it out there for you to sell. Just get it sold and move on and don't beat yourself up over you could have d done it differently you could have done it better what if I had done this should I have done that don't don't should on yourself meaning s-h-o-u-l-d um, don't sit around shoulding <laughs> should I've done this should I have done that that is totally not productive you're not going to get anywhere um, make the best decision you can with the information you have at the time and move on okay Sandra bought this coffee maker at a garage sale, paid $10, sold it for $120. Took about two months. Let's see what this is. Cuisinart, eight cup programmable espresso cappuccino. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Um, it looks practically new. Did she? Oh, she listed it as used, but I mean, it's so clean and shiny and pretty. Look at how nice that looks beautiful I mean that looks brand new and it was ten dollars and she sold it for a hundred and twenty perfect wonderful okay Amy can't remember if she posted this one estate sale on half price day ten dollars sold for 230 plus shipping in about a month also got a couple of Willis and Geiger shirts so here's a brand name for you to look for, Willis and Geiger, and this is a hunting, quilted hunting jacket. Take a look at your computer if you're listening or your phone, and here is the logo, the tag, the label. It's green with two lions facing each other, Willis and Geiger Outfitters. So this is specialty hunting or flight, like... Uh, you know, if you fly an airplane kind of thing, uh, clothing. And look at the picture here. It looks pretty plain. It looks pretty blah, you know. It's just kind of a khaki green basic jacket. But you've got to look at those labels to see if it's high end. So she got this for $10, sold it for 230 And here Amy is again. Two dollars on half price day sold for a hundred dollars and it is a military aviator kit bag so apparently this estate sale she went to the um, person was military and had all this cool stuff it was probably a pilot or somehow involved in um, you know flying because he's got this cool stuff. I've sold helmet bags, coveralls, all those kind of things. Those do really well. Be, and especially if it's military because it's made, it's very durable. It's going to last. It's not some crappy Walmart thing that's going to fall apart. So this is a aviator like flight bag. Looks like it's made of canvas and it's dirty and that doesn't matter. Um, it's got property of US government. And that's cool. And it was two dollars and it sold for a hundred dollars in eight days. Um, there's got the same thing posted there twice. Then we've got Janet who bought at a yard sale while on vacation in Virginia, paid twelve dollars, sold for four hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Um, needless to say when I heard the ka-ching I was doing a happy dance in my kitchen. An Hermes scarf was on my bucket list to find only because I learned about it from this group. And yes, it is pronounced Hermes, not Hermes. So you want to sound like an educated and worldly seller when you pronounce these things correctly. Otherwise, you sound kind of uneducated and kind of like you don't know what you're talking about. So <laughs> yes, I was almost an English major, so that's kind of a thing is... um 
making sure people spell things correctly and pronounce them correctly because it does matter on eBay, especially how you spell it. So here is her um, Hermes scarf with the box. Beautiful. I mean, people buy just the boxes for these things. It's got the paperwork. It's got the pretty scarf with the flags on it. Statue of Liberty. Beautiful. And she got $450 for this. And she bought it at a yard sale for $12. So that goes to show you right there. Um, if people are putting expensive stuff like this in yard sales, I mean, my question is like, why don't you sell it on eBay? You can make so much more money. And most people, they think it's too much trouble. They're too intimidated. They don't have time. I love that one. You have time for whatever you make time for. I just don't buy that excuse, I don't have time. Um, it, we all have 24 hours in a day. And yes, if you're, if you're ill, if you're a caregiver, if you're a parent, your time a lot of, in a lot of situations is not your own. Um, you're at the mercy of other things but when people come to me to sell their stuff and they're like I don't have time and it's like well this is kind of important that you want to make time to do this because you can make money at home on your own schedule in your pajamas watching your favorite movies having a glass of wine or coffee or whatever your thing is and so here you go people putting really expensive stuff in their yard sales because they for whatever reason don't want to sell on eBay and most of the time it's because they're intimidated they think it's too much to learn or um, in some cases they think it's beneath them they just oh that's you know that's for people who just sell junk and um, who, who can't do anything else and you know that doesn't I'm not gonna do that you know I'm above that and I get that all the time too which is fine with me because <laughs> I buy their stuff for ten dollars and sell it for a hundred. Um, so eBay is not dead because Janet bought this for twelve dollars and sold it for four hundred and fifty. Okay, you can tell I'm really on an eBay is not dead kick because I'm just so overhearing that on YouTube and social media that you can't make money on eBay. I I'm just over it. All right, Jessica bought two of these new in box Logitech football mice like computer mouse um, blah 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 um, I'm, I'm reading this before I read it to you we sold a very used one in the past for about thirty to forty dollars they were no similar listings or comps so priced high one at a time I didn't want someone snatching up both if it was priced too low the first one sold in about three weeks at two hundred Canadian dollars and she's had the second one listed at 250 for three weeks. So this is a very specific gaming computer mouse. Um, Logitech football optical. Okay, so it's just a mouse shaped by a football. I'm sorry, I thought it was a something for gaming, but um, it's called Little Hands Gamer. It's made just for little hands for little kids, and it's shaped like a football. So she paid six dollars Canadian and sold it, which is about four fifty U.S. Thank you for putting those um, both U.S. and Canadian dollars. That helps me. Sold it at two hundred Canadian dollars, which is one hundred and fifty U.S. It's fantastic. So look for for cool little computer mice. Yes, people still use them um, in cool shapes because that one sold for one hundred and fifty U.S. dollars. All right, then we've got Wendy. Bought this vintage art print for $1.25 from a thrift store. Took best offer of $170. It was in my death pile for almost a year. Shame on you, Wendy. <laughs> you could have gotten that money faster. But congratulations on getting it listed and getting it sold. So yes, hindsight is 2020. We all know that. Here is the print, and it is... Ernst Ludwig Kirschner, Berlin street scene. So it's an interesting uh, print there. She's got the information on the back. I don't see a date on there. The um, now is the street scene 1912 to 1913. Like that's the time frame that 
it's depicting or is that when it was actually made? Good question. Um, it looks like that's when it was published. Hard to say um, because I don't know when all these copyright laws came into effect so that might help date it but in any event she sold a nice looking piece of art for $170 and Wendy if you're watching I bet you're kicking yourself that you didn't list it sooner so everyone else don't kick yourself a year from now because you didn't list it today all right we've got Casey back with um, <laughs> ready to close out this chapter of the latest recycling center super find Casey you should do like a a YouTube channel with you know as the recycling center turns and all your little episodes of stuff you're finding and selling because <laughs> it is quite a, um, a saga of uh, when you find stuff alright so this was five dollars and let's see what he sold it for he's got a whole bunch of numbers in here total sales of sixteen hundred dollars minus a three hundred thirty dollar refund and one negative feedback Ugh, I hate it when that happens um, 17 transactions pretty epic for what really looked like a pile of junk to both the seller and me really amazing for just pulling more stuff out of the trash so let's see what he pulled out of the trash and it is um, outdoor wireless access point I, I did a sigh because yes it just looks like a bunch of junk <laughs> it just doesn't look like anything you could make much money on it's just some things you plug some stuff into and he made a bunch of money on stuff like that so total sales of sixteen hundred thirty five dollars actual net profit was thirteen hundred dollars so that was from a five dollar purchase at his recycling center all right moving on Lisa purchased for four dollars sold on auction for a hundred and seventy seven fifty and what is it Rothy's the loafer forest tartan size 10 flat shoes okay so these are very interesting I have never heard of this Rothy's R-O-T-H-Y-S um, and they are just some slip-on loafers um, some people call these driving mocks. If they have the um, nubby bottoms to them, then they're driving mocks. Driving moccasins. But she's pulled up the liner here so you can see um, that the insoles are removable. Which a lot of higher end shoes are like that. The insoles are removable. You can replace them. You can clean them. So that is a clue often that you've got a higher end item when the the insoles come out okay great and those went for a hundred and seventy seven fifty and she got them for four dollars okay Kari paid ten dollars at a garage sale listed it too high thankfully someone made an offer went back and forth sold for hundred and seventy five dollars after two days never heard of the brand but once I felt the leather I could tell it was high quality the woman cashing people out at the garage sale said she's selling this purse I think she was mad that she didn't see it first. Yep, that's right. Early bird gets the worm, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, all that good stuff. This is, let's see, did I click on the right thing there? View original item. Okay, we've got Hammett Montana reversible fold over cross body, cross body shoulder bag purse and I'm looking for the logo here so that's a very cool looking purse with um, the grommets on the strap or the the leather There's, it's studded with metal basically and so it's oh it's reversible that's very cool okay and let's take a look at the logo there Hammett H-A-M-M-I-T-T -T. And there it is again, Hammett, Los Angeles. Beautiful looking leather, pebbled leather. That's what you call this when it's bumpy. It's pebbled leather. Shows the inside there, the 
pockets are all nice and clean. Very nice. So maybe this is a new item to some of you. I've not heard of this before. Hammett Montana Reversible Fold Over Purse. So they probably make handbags, so look for that. Okay, continuing on, we've got Linda who paid $7 for this very special dress a few months ago. Sold today for, which was on <laughs> 7-Eleven, oh this is funny, one day only at a price of $177.11. And what is it? It's a 7-Eleven vintage employee uniform. So that is so funny. Look at all those 7s and 11s in that listing. I guess that would be a day to go and buy a lottery ticket with 7s and 11s on it. So here it is, 7-Eleven vintage employee uniform dress. That is so funny. Um, and this could be a Halloween costume. You, you never know what people are going to do with these things. I had a friend that would actually go to Waffle House and borrow a waitress's um, uniform to wear for Halloween. That was so funny. Um, so this is definitely a vintage 7-Eleven dress. And again, she paid $7 for this and it sold for $177.11 on July 11th, which was 7-Eleven. So a little Twilight Zone music playing there. All right, we've got Linda again, who paid $5 for the Scrubbing Bubbles shower cleaner that we just saw a little while ago, and it sold for $105. So again, these things are out there. You've just got to be able to recognize them and pick them up. And, you know, this is why I am really very anti only selling in a niche, because if you only sell belt buckles or you only sell video games or, you know, you're very limited in what you can make money on, um, I mean, what, what kind of niche would this even be in? You know, cleaning products or I don't know. But you're already in the thrift store anyway or at the garage sale or wherever you are getting stuff so why not be open to anything you can make a profit on it just it makes more sense to me and having been in this business for so long and sold so many different things I'm just encouraging you especially if you're newer or your business is stagnant you've got to get a, a wider variety of items up for sale because um, that's just how it works. So here it is, $105, and she paid $5 for it. Okay, we've got Christina who paid $8 at the local thrift store and sold for a total of $105.99. And this is some clothing. Antica Sartoria Graco Sink. Oh, okay, maybe I butchered that dress so it's basically a dress a designer um, that I have not heard of but that's okay I haven't heard of everything and I'm trying to find the label does she have a picture of the label no she doesn't but um, very interesting dress there with the um, blue and white nautical stripes shells maybe it looks like lobsters uh, coral lots of interesting seashell embroidery beautifully made item very unusual and again eight dollars and sold for 105.99 all right we've got George Kelly our superstar former estate sale organizer knower of all knowledge of things that are unusual George Kelly um, check out my interview with him Bought this little painting at a garage sale for $5. I thought it was Japanese. Looked up the artist and turns out she's a well-known Native American artist. Sold at a seven-day auction for $735. I want to be George Kelly when I grow up. He's always doing this. Um, here he is. Here's his, his listing. Valjean McCartney Hessing horse painting framed and 27 bids so let's take a look at his 
auction and see he started it at $125 and it went all the way up to $735 and again he paid five dollars for this he's doing this all the time he you know I paid a dollar for this I sold it for 400 and I will say he has an unfair advantage that he used to organize and run estate sales so he knows a lot he knows about what to look for and what to research further so if you haven't seen that interview with him please watch it it will help educate you on how to do this business better and um, just show you that eBay is not dead there's just too many people being successful okay we've got Karen who paid a dollar ninety nine at Goodwill listed for about five months took a best offer of a hundred dollars plus shipping and this is a water filtration system Berkey light filtration system no filters new so that looks pretty plain um, so some water tanks and some doohickey parts <laughs> to make it work $1.99 at Goodwill and sold for $100. Okay, Mary paid $7.99 for these at thrift store, sold in about a month for best offer of $120. They are vintage black Converse. Oh, I'm sorry, they're not black. Um, Converse All Star High Top, made in USA, size 11, American flag, stars and stripes shoes very very cool looking patriotic stuff does really well those are quite unusual that's definitely not something you see every day she's got all the good information oh wow they're hardly worn very good condition and so again she paid $7.99 and took a best offer of $120 and it took about a month okay we've got Marcia Paid $5 for this at an estate sale, half price day. Listed in May, sold last week, remember we're in July, of $122. Had lots of lowball offers on it. I just saw the person who bought it, reviewed it, and said it was excellent quality, but the shipping was costly. This blanket weighed almost 7 pounds, and I only charged him $18 priority. I had to use a vacuum seal bag to even get it into the large flat rate box. Anyway, she's justifying the shipping charge, which, you know, heavy things cost money. So let's take a look at what the item is. Oh, why is this not going? Is it me or is it her? Okay, it says she said she couldn't get the listing to post. Anyway, it was a vintage Fieldcrest Windsong blanket, thermal blanket. So we can't see it because the link didn't work, but she paid $5 for it and took a best offer of $122 for a blanket. All right, we've got Janine. Found this when I was about to give up at one of my favorite Goodwills. Paid $2.99, sold for asking price of $130 within 24 hours. And it's an Eileen Fisher sweater. Or is it a top? Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, it's top. Eileen Fisher top, 2X, silk, long sleeve. And if you don't know the Eileen Fisher label, there it is. This is a great brand to sell. And what I like about this is all the things this item has going for it. Uh, high dollar brand name, plus size, it's 2X. And is it 100% silk? Yep, 100% silk. So three major factors there that you know help get her get this price brand name size color and then also the style it's a longer tunic um, that's a popular thing now and comfortable and so you've got to look for like the perfect cocktail of what's going to help your item sell so you know you can't just say buy all Eileen's Eileen Fisher that's not the way it works buy everything 2x no, that's not the way it works. You've got to have all these things combined that make the item valuable. Okay, Janine again saw this at my local thrift store, almost didn't pick it up. Dr. Ho just didn't call my name. 
but I saw they had priced it at $20, so I checked it. It sold for $149.97 plus shipping about a week later. Also in my research, saw that there were many listings from China that said compare to Dr. Ho. So let's go see what Dr. Ho is. All right, let's see. It's Dr. Ho. Okay, so there, there he is on the box. Take a look at this if you're not looking. Um, it's a two-in-one decompression back belt. It's a support back belt, okay? So apparently that is a um, high-dollar item to sell in the medical category and here's all the stuff that came in the box and again she bought it for twenty dollars and sold it for 149 okay then we've got Chase who has this 1970 Martin classical spruce Indian acoustic guitar bought at Goodwill for forty five dollars sold it for get this two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars in one hour I think Chase is our winner on this episode of stuff that sold over a hundred dollars. <laughs> um, I wonder, Chase, do you know guitars? Is this your background? Are you a musical um, instrument aficionado where you know what's valuable? There it is. Beautiful. The case looks great. Look at that. Just beautiful, immaculate condition and it's vintage. He's got a serial number chart there to uh, make his listing look more credible and let's see if there's any there's no comments under your um, under your post there Chase. I'm gonna give you a, a love on that and um, I hope you're watching this and maybe can help inform us if you are knowledgeable in that niche of musical instruments or if you just had a gut feeling on that um, 20 I'm sorry $45 investment that turned into a $2,200 sale in one hour I mean what did you pay two months rent with that <laughs> that's fantastic um, and then we have Chase again with a wooden decoy duck bought at Goodwill for $4.99 sold in 15 minutes for $250 so I am going to sign up to go thrifting with Chase and learn some stuff. Here it is, Antique Duck. And you might just look at this and think, oh, this is just some crappy wooden thing, you know. But I've seen these again and again selling for good money. And uh, because they're handmade, they're unusual, they're collectible. Um, $250, and he paid... I'm, I'm thinking Chase is a he, um, paid five bucks for it. Let's see what people said. Even sold with a $4.99 on the bottom. Yep, things will sell that way. Okay, we've got Licia with a found in a bag of junk by a dumpster at a storage unit. Oh, I love these. The, these are Oakley's. Oakley's sunglasses or just regular glasses so that the frames somebody bought these for the frames and they sold for two hundred and three dollars and fifty cents and they were free on the ground all right and then she bought some of these uh, looks like at a thrift store for three dollars and they sold for a hundred and fifteen dollars and fifty cents they are Warnet aviator sunglass frames so apparently she's got some knowledge of sunglasses or glasses and frames okay here we are with KC again um, what's he got let's see I'm just gonna condense this $25 purchase went sold for $1,050 on best offer in less than 24 hours. Now these big sales, I know for a fact these people like George and Casey and others that I have personally talked to, they have huge inventories. It's not like they just go buy this one thing and it sells. They have really large inventories, a lot of things that aren't listed yet, and 
So when you see this, you've got to realize the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes that we're not showing you. Um, George Kelly said something like he could list, he could spend the next month listing all the unlisted stuff at his house and um, not have to buy anything else because they see the deals and they buy the stuff and then they get it listed and that's just their process. So this is a Lego set that Casey sold for a um, thousand fifty best offer. It was a twenty-five dollar purchase, but he he did tell me he has quite a bit of unlisted inventory. He's got drawers and cabinets full of Lego stuff that he has bought and parted out and separated. And so um, I don't want you newer people to just to think, oh, you just go to the thrift store and buy this one thing and it sells for a thousand dollars. And if that doesn't happen for you, you're a failure or you can't do it because no, you're not, you don't see the whole picture here. There's a lot that goes on to get them to this point and a lot of work, a lot of unpaid hours, a lot of inventory, a lot of things that don't work. And so this is celebrating their success. So, you know, keep that in mind. We've got Linda again, who paid $11.99 for this Robert Kirk Limited Cable Car Clothiers full length camel hair coat. So it's basically a camel hair coat, which are good consistent sellers over time. This is something that's durable, it's warm, it's fashionable, and has been popular for many, many decades. So this is um, just a particular brand I don't know that the brand really has as much to do with it as the fact that it's 100% camel hair. Um, you know, sometimes you'll find the fabric itself is what is the valuable thing. Obviously, if it's a, a Burberry or a Brooks Brothers or a Ralph Lauren, you know, those kind of brands, that factors into the price. But um, I don't know this brand. That doesn't mean it's not valuable. I'm just saying I don't know it. Um, but she turned. 12 bucks into 200 pretty quickly and because it's camel hair all right we've got Licia again and she paid six dollars for this at ARC now what does that mean I don't know what that stands for I'm guessing it's some kind of thrift store um, this is a furbo dog camera so home security for your dog and she picked this up for six dollars and it sold for 112 perfect all right Amy typewriter paid six dollars at Goodwill took best offer 160 dollars plus shipping took about two weeks to sell this is one of those vintagey looking um, it's definitely vintage not just vintage looking it is a manual typewriter and these the ones that are the colors do the best people collect them they put them out as display pieces uh, you know home decor whatever you want to call it so this brand is oh it's an Olivetti okay Olivetti she's got the paperwork there and you can see it's the the light blue color Olivetti Underwood made in Italy that's another red flag to look something up when it's made in Italy because very high quality stuff comes from Italy and then she's showing everything about it I like how you did your pictures there um, and made some collages to get all of that in um, eBay doesn't really promote um, encourage you to do that because um, it's just harder to see but when you've got something like this and you want to show a lot of pictures of it and you run out of room you run out of the 12 pictures you can do some of them with collages to help you know help show everything but her main picture there her gallery photo is of the typewriter the case and all the paperwork so that's displayed beautifully and again that was six dollars and sold for 160 plus shipping so that's excellent all right, we've got Licia again, bought for $3, starting bid of 128 on five-day auction. And what did it sell for? Boy, she sells all kind of cool stuff. And I, I kind of corresponded with Licia a little bit, and she said, you know, her husband 
they both do the thrifting together um, you know and they know different things so it's always good to have a, a buddy someone in your life that um, does this with you so this is a radar detector windshield mount and it sold for $138 and she paid $3 for it all right another one from Licia is $8 this item sold for 138 and let's go see what it is. It is Nikon digital camera. She's got a nice camera there with lenses and the reference manual on a DVD and the paperwork, the booklets, the strap, the box, everything. And where'd she get this? $8 and sold it for $138. All right, I love this thread. Okay, Casey Vetterly is back, $10 for this item at a thrift store, sold for 350 best offer with free shipping. And it's some scuba stuff. Scuba, regulator, aqualung, second stage. Okay, so I don't know anything about scuba stuff, but this is what it is. He sold it for $350 and it was $10. He, he knows how to hustle it. All right, another one from KC is um, $7.50 on half price day, $149 plus shipping in one week. Let's go look at it. And it is Sequest Latitude. It's a, like a life vest, a buoyancy compensator. All right, I wonder if that came with the scuba stuff. Somebody just you know just donated their stuff they're done with scuba diving and they don't need this um, so you know when it looks weird and unusual look it up because that's where the money's going to be it's getting out of your comfort zone um, you know if you're just doing coffee mugs go look at the sporting goods if you're just doing shoes go look at the baby stuff look at the kitchen stuff you know maximize your time at that location because you're already there you might as well learn as much as you can and I guarantee you every single one of us is walking by stuff that will sell for good money it's just you can't know everything but you can keep trying to know everything and keep trying to um, improve your knowledge base and um, no one in this business will ever know anything there's always more to learn because there's something being invented right this second that is going to be out there in six months that we're all going to be looking for so it's never going to stop uh, however this video is going to stop because we're at the end of this thread so if you are not in my Facebook group it's called stay at home mom selling on eBay and it's everybody it's not just moms we started off back in 2008 with a few moms and the group got so big we cannot change the name now so um, we have this thread every month where people are posting their over hundred dollar sales we have money making Mondays um, if, if all you do is come to the group and read that stuff you don't have to comment you don't have to post you don't have to do anything just come there for the educational value because you will learn so much about what people are selling how to do eBay um, and that of course eBay is not dead because I've just proved to you that it's not. So thanks so much for watching. Please comment below and come check out my premium content library and see what else you are missing. Have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.